Reginald Marsh began his career in journalism a little more than 20 years after George Lukes and Everett Shin, two of the so-called Ashcan School artists who were also in this exhibition. He was an illustrator for New York City's major newspapers and magazines, and was one of the first cartoonists for The New Yorker, which began publication in 1925. For these artists, the city streets, dockyards, and dance halls were their studios, and the people working or carousing there were their subjects. While on the staff of the New York Daily News, Marsh did a cartoon review of vaudeville and burlesque. His familiarity with the setting and his cartoonist skill in capturing the mood and character of the place are clear in Texas Guinan and her gang. Curator Mary Murray. Reginald Marsh's paintings reflect his love of drawing. He chose egg tempera over oil paint so that he could emphasize line. The male customers, the dancers, and Texas Guinan herself are described by layers of lively, thin strokes of vivid color in keeping with the jumpy, flashy, speakeasy atmosphere. Compare Marsh's paintings to Edward Hopper's Cape Cod landscape, Camel's Hump, in which Hopper brushes the canvas with long, smooth passages of oil paint. Texas Guinan was a larger-than-life actress, singer, and the hostess of various New York nightclubs and speakeasies. There were thousands in 1931 when Marsh made this painting, which was two years before the end of Prohibition. Writer and journalist Constance Rosenblum, in her book Gold Digger, describes a typical scene with Tex presiding over the festivities at one of her clubs. Reminding one observer of a gorgeous tamer who has just let herself into a large cage of pet tigers, Texas stood on two chairs set side by side in the center of the room, her generous figure encased in a rose-colored cocktail dress, her thick blonde hair pushed into rigid waves, mascara dripping from her lashes, and ropes of pearls dangling around her neck. As she kept a practiced eye on the crowd, near-naked dancing girls stuffed cherries into patrons' mouths, pelted them with felt snowballs, and playfully ruffled their hair. The click of wooden noisemakers and the pop of champagne corks punctuated the air, and from the moment the stars came out until they faded in the morning sky, the action never flagged. <laughs> 